All right, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna talk about Jermel Charlo, Brian Castano, and the sanctioning bodies, and specifically that these two guys might actually both drop belts in order to in order to rematch their previous fight for Undisputed. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So uh, before we get into the subject matter of the video, please make sure if you're not subscribed to subscribe to the channel and also please feel free to like the video, also share the video, it would be greatly appreciated. So this video, this particular topic has meaning to me because I've been a very, I've been a lifelong fan of the sport of boxing. And over the time that I've been watching boxing, which is over 40 years, I have noticed that, you know, that the sanctioned bodies, there got to be more and more sanctioning bodies and more and more delusion or the championship belts got more and more diluted all the way to the point now where it is very, very hard to recognize anybody in boxing as the champion in the weight division. You have a bunch of people who are champions, but at the current moment, nobody is the champion in an entire weight division. And that's because obviously you've got four different weight divisions and less, a little less obvious, you have all the politics that go in to making fights for the people that hold more than one of those belts. So, and when you have all three, all four of the championship belts, see that's what I'm saying, it used to be three, now it's four. Maybe about a year ago, people were talking about the IBO and trying to make the IBO a fifth. Anthony Joshua was actually saying he was a four belt champion while, while uh, Deontay Wilder still had the WBC belt, which was like, come on, man, can you stop being so selfish with this, with the promotion of your fighters? Adding a fifth, a, a fifth sanctioning body was just absolutely too much. At a certain point in time, you got to think like, how far is it going to go? I wish that people would have thought about that, you know, back in the early 1980s when the IBF came around or the mid 1980s. I do believe it was the mid 1980s when the WBO came around, but it just really just dilutes the the championships. But now we had one of like what was a rare event uh, of Jermel Charlo, who was who held three of the championship belts, the WBA, the WBC and the IBF. And Brian Castano held the WBO and they got together and they fought for the undisputed title. Now, the last couple times that that had occurred, you where you had like Terrence Crawford fought Julius Ndungo for the undisputed title. Just recently, Josh Taylor uh, fought Jose Ramirez for undisputed and Alexander Usyk. I can't remember who he fought, but that was in a tournament where all the belts were on the line. You know, all of those fights resulted in a undisputed championship being named. Now, shortly thereafter, the there you know they wound up like not defending the belt. I think. Uh, maybe Alexander Usyk was the only one who defended that belt against Tony uh, Bellew, and then after that he was gone. But and Josh Taylor, I think I do believe is about to. Maybe he, yeah, he's about to um, uh, defend his. So Josh Taylor may have, <clears throat> may have a title defense in his, you know, in his repertoire um, or on, on his record. But it's just very rare. And a hard thing to do. But so now you have one of the this first time, though, that uh, and I think this is actually a good thing to have happened now that the, as it's playing as it's playing out. This is the first time where two guys fought and it wound up being a draw. And now you have to figure out, are they going to fight each other again? But the problem is that Jermel Charlo has a has a, a mandatory against a guy named uh, Bakram uh, uh, Murtazalev. Please forgive me for, for butchering his name. And Brian Castano has a, has a mandatory against a guy named Tim Zhu who's out of Australia. So, but it seems like both of these guys are saying that they are willing to drop their belts or contemplating dropping the IBF and the WBO to to have that fight again because 
Brian Castano says he doesn't want any part of Tim Zoo. Tim Zoo is not formally the mandatory yet, so there's still a, a chance that that he may be able to hold on to that belt. But the IBF belt with um, with uh, uh, Mert Mertzalev, forgive me, Mertzalev, and that's another problem. Man. Like Mertzalev is the, is I watch I pay attention to a lot of boxing. And I don't know who Mark Zetelev is. But so the idea that he would be holding the uh, undisputed championship in, in what, you know, in abeyance is absolutely ridiculous to me. But what it does is it highlights this issue, the issue of these, sanction, of these sanctioning bodies for boxing fans. Now, if this were to happen, and this is what I think should happen, if Jermel Charlo was forced to fight if the, if the w, IBF is forcing him to have that mandatory against this guy, uh, Bahram, and he decides, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do in this, and the IBF, I think, is a very good sanctioning body. I like the IBF, so I'm not picking on the IBF. I think the IBF, of all the sanctioned bodies, is the most responsible with the way that they enforce their mandatories and the way that they run their business because they actually, with their mandatory um, stripped Canelo Alvarez of the IBF of the IBF belt because he wouldn't defend that belt against um, against uh, Sergey Devranchenko. Where the WBC, when when Jamal Charlo wouldn't, I mean when Canelo Alvarez refused to defend against Jamal Charlo, they didn't strip him. They elevated him to this franchise champion and then wrote something where, oh, you don't ever have to have a mandatory again. So I don't mean to blast on the IBF with this. However, if the IBF has to be the example, you know, just so be it. And this one where if Jamal Char Jamel Charlo is willing to walk away from that to fight Brian Castano, I think that would be a great thing because – that shows that shows fight fans that they know who the real champion is because and and the, and to highlight the fact that it's the politics behind the sanctioning bodies that really prevent people from knowing who the champion is and what i think is the politics behind all of these sanctioned bodies is the reason that that boxing is in a hard way as it is because you have so many champions that nobody can tell you who the best fighter is in any particular division. You have to rely upon what the opinion is of the boxing media. And that opinion varies. And, and those opinions are often um, heavily influenced by the promoter and who the promoter, you know, you know, who, who, what media people are, in, are, you know, are in the pocket of, I think that's the best way to say it in the pocket of that, of that promoter. That's why you have all of these really skewed pound for pound lists on ESPN and on ring, you know, where you see these guys, the, the boxing writers have financial connections to the promoters. And that gives you reason to say that one guy is better than the other, but all in all, I like the fact, and I hope that Jermel Charlo does do that. If he's forced, I would really hope that this would force the IBF just to say, okay, we'll hold off that mandatory, for if if you agree to fight, you know, Brian Castano within a certain amount of time. But, you know, to have to do all kind of craziness just to figure out who the best fighter in the world is, it's really a tough and it's not good for boxing. Anyway, so that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think. And with that, I'm out. Peace.